life is better with vision, and we're going to add vision to your life today. Greg Fritz Ministries wants to give you a free booklet entitled, Get Your Vision Back, that accompanies this television series as our gift to you. To receive your free printed copy of this booklet, call us at 918-878-8000. To download the ebook version, visit our website at gregfritz.org. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. I love Greg. I love the way he teaches faith and the way he teaches healing. It's phenomenal. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. Because he delivers the word of God with such warmth and balance and great clarity. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We're going to continue our teaching, Get Your Vision Back. And I've really enjoyed this. I've gotten inspired. In fact, I was inspired to do it. Uh, I, we really had other plans um, to, to do other series right now, but I just felt like I needed to get this out to you. We've fast-tracked this entire series to the YouTube channel. If you'd like to watch it there, uh, you can go re-watch it on YouTube, uh, Greg Fritz Ministries YouTube channel. I, I, would I was thinking about opening the program by saying we have interrupted your regularly broadcast, <laughs> your regularly scheduled broadcast to bring you this special message because that's really what it is and that's what we're doing uh, with this message on vision. And so uh, if you would like to get my series, it's called Get Your Vision Back. That's available to download for free. And the download is, is a selection. When you go to the product on our website, choose the download, set, uh, the, the, the download button. You'll go over then and when you go to checkout, enter VISION24, VISION24. You say, is that all caps? Yes. Is that no spaces? Yes. Is that one cap? Yes. Is it one cap and a space? Yes. We've entered it in every way you can possibly do it. But just to make it simple, all caps, no space. That'll work. You get your free download. And if you want to become a partner, if you've been praying about it and you say, you know what, I'm ready. I want to join you for the next 12 months. And I want to run with you. I want to invest in what you're doing. We would love to have you and we'll give you this free of charge. We'll send it to you as part of your partner packet. And uh, we'll explain to you all the, the, uh, the value of partnership. You can go to my website and see that, call our helpline. But you need to, when you sign up, you need to call us or email us and specify what you want, whether you want the CD version or the USB version. And we will mail that out to you free of charge. You must specify. We have people call us, none of you probably, but people call and they say, hey, I want all that free stuff. Well, they don't even know what we're offering. They probably aren't watching and they just want free stuff so they can get a, I mean, a packet and put it on eBay or something. So just specify. If you, uh, if you want this, we'll be happy to send it to you as a new partner, but just say, hey, you know, this, this program is going to be seen over and over in the months to come. And, and so uh, we don't know when people are signing up, but this is a special offer to those who want to partner this week. And uh, I want you to have your free, your free um, get your vision back, but we're not just going to send it out as, as part of anyone's free stuff. Uh, you really need to specify. <laughs> and uh, I say that because I value my stuff. I don't, I'm just, I, I value it. So, uh, so don't, don't judge me. All right. So let's talk about vision. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And that is a powerful statement. I believe the enemy is using current events to try and rob Christians of their vision. And I'm here to stop it. I'm here to help you get your vision back. Proverbs 29, 18 in the New King James says it this way, where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Or you could say where there's no vision, the people cast off restraint. Vision helps you stay the course. Vision helps you know where you're going. It gives you direction. It gives you purpose. It gives you meaning. And as I said before, and I'll say this one more time, high school would be considered cruel and unusual punishment if people didn't understand graduation. That's vision. The vision for high school is I want to graduate. 
Now you may want to try to do other things along the way, but the ultimate goal is to graduate. If you take that out of the equation and you're just going through the motion, you think this is my life, I'm not ever going to go do anything beyond this, what's the point? And it would cause you to not study. I mean, why take a test if there's no purpose? Just uh, why, why study for a test if there's no purpose in passing a test? It's not going to change my life. I'm not going to go in any further. And so that's what he's saying in Proverbs is if there's no revelation, the people cast off restraints. Then it doesn't matter what I do. I'll skip class. I'll sleep during class. I'll play. I'll I'll take it for granted. I won't do homework. I won't even take the test. Or I'll go in and read the test and not answer the questions on the test. And, and so when you have no vision, you, you cast off any kind of discipline, no restraints. But when you have vision, you do things that people who don't have vision don't do. You discipline, you pray, you press, you believe, you have joy, you have a sense of purpose. It, it all works together. You may think it would be nice to coast through life with no purpose, but it's not. That's not the way we were born to live. And, and when, when your, your future gets clouded and the things that you be, began this race for when you were a young Christian, when that begins to get clouded or pushed into the distant future where it may not even be a possibility anymore, the, the, what creeps in is sadness, depression, and then no, no discipline. I don't pray anymore. What's the point of praying? I, I'm, I'm stuck in a rut. I can't get out. I'm never going to do anything more. So what God told Habakkuk to do, because he did the same, he went through the same process. He was very discouraged. You can see that in the first chapter of Habakkuk. The first thing God told Habakkuk was, was, was uh, I'm, I'm going to do a work in your day which you would not believe. In other words, don't give up on God. Just because you haven't seen me do anything in a while doesn't mean I'm not capable. I'm going to do a work that if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Believe that, that God is still able to do powerful things in your life and with your life. Uh, and then he told him this, and this is the second point. He said, write the vision and make it plain. Write it on tablets that, that those who run may read it. Why, why read the vision? Because that's what motivates you. That's what gets you out of bed. That's what helps you do the things you need to do uh, to, to, to succeed, to cr cross your finish line with joy. And, and believe me, every one of us have a right to live with purpose, to live with vision, and have great expectations. Why? Because God is your Father, and God has made you promises that He will fulfill if you'll only believe. Don't stop believing. Don't give up your, your dreams for the future, for your country, for your children, for your family, for your career. If God has made promises to you in the past, He means what He said. He's not a man that He should lie. He does not change. And I'm going to give you, in the upcoming episodes, you don't want to miss this, I'm going to give you lies, some lies that Satan tells people to help them, to, to cause them to give up their vision. He can't just overwhelm you. He can't mug you or kidnap you and hold you for ransom. But he can lie to you and try to get you to give up your vision. He wants to get you to get so discouraged because of time or because of current events or because of other things that you say, it can't happen. It's not going to happen. God's not going to do it. And, and that's what forfeits, that's what puts you on the sideline. If you've already done that, I want to encourage you, get back in the game. It's your promise, it's your vision, you can get it back. You can just say, get back in the game like a football game and tell the quarterback, give me the ball. Give me my ball back on this play, I want back in the game. And God will, will restart the clock and you can get on with your life. And that's what He wants for you. Man, if you're living with no purpose, uh, shake yourself out of it. Get back in the Word. Get, get back into fellowship with Christians. Get back in church. Watch the rest of this series. One of the things that you can believe for and run for is heaven. That's a promise that all of us have, and it's in our future. That is a real promise. 
Let me, let me give you an example of this. Because every person in the Bible that we read about that was successful to any extent had vision. They ran with vision. They ran with a promise from God. And uh, Hebrews eleven fifteen 15 says uh, about the people of God in the past, truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. And he's just saying that God delivered them from from, you know, Egypt, they, he delivered them with, the mighty, with mighty miracles and they had to keep moving forward because if they didn't, if they lost their vision, if they lost their view of the future, the promised land, they would have gone back. And that's not where you belong. You don't go back into bondage. Don't go back into, into slavery. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country, Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And so he's actually taking this exodus out of, the, out of Egypt and this entrance into the promised land, and he's bringing it forward. This is Hebrews. He's bringing it into New Testament um, terms. And he says, look, we too came out of the past bondage. We came out and, and, and we are now looking forward to another city, another country, and we run this way. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called our God. He wants you to run with purpose. It's important you were born to run with vision. And he says, for he has prepared a city for them. And, and, you know, there are other promises I'm sure that God has made you like he has me that have to do with my life and, and my future and my career or whatever that, that are still in process. And, and we run with that. But, but let me tell you what goes even beyond that is a city called heaven. That is your ultimate goal. That's your home. You, you know, I, I have this saying that, um, that, you know, people are always using this, this expression at the end of the day and then they summarize everything or, or they try to at the end of the day and it's overused, it's kind of boring. But really, as a Christian, think about this. As a Christian, no matter how bad your day was, no matter what happened, no matter what happened on the news, no matter what happened in, in the battlefield, no matter what happened with the economy, at the end of the day, you are one day closer to heaven. And that's something to rejoice over. Man, I will never have to go through that last 24 hours again. I am that much closer to the finish line, the ultimate finish line. And that should be a motivator for us. That in itself, and let me read this again because he gives this to us to encourage us. It says, truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. You and I came out of sin. We came out of, uh, of, of you know, death. We came out of the kingdom of darkness. And, and so the enemy, he uses the same lies on everyone, but... Maybe he's told you this before. This lie doesn't work on me anymore, but, you know, because I got saved so young. But, but he'll tell people, you, you had it better when you were in the world. You, you had a better life. You were happier. You were freer. And that's just not true. Uh, to, to live your life partying and satisfying the desires of the flesh is really no way to live life. So don't believe these lies. That is causing you to have opportunity to return. Don't do it. When you lose vision, people cast off restraints. They, they cast off discipline. They, they, don't have, they don't see the reason to live holy, to pray, to seek God, to be salt and light, to support uh, righteous causes, to vote. Uh, there are people that are so discouraged today, they, they don't even vote anymore. What good is that going to do? Well, you should vote. It's your responsibility. You have that right, that freedom. And then you have people that don't pray anymore. What good does it do? I've prayed and it didn't work. And they're discouraged. You have people who, who are so discouraged, they don't want to have kids because I don't want to create individuals to grow up in this horrible world. That's a terrible outlook on life. You have people that, that are so convinced that climate change is going to be the end of the world that they don't want to have families. They want to go live in a cave. They want to drive an electric car or ride a bike. They don't want to progress. They don't want to go forward. That's ungodly. God told us to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. He told us to subdue the earth. 
He told us to take care of, 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 of the, you know, the part of the earth that belongs to us. It's okay to mow your grass. It's okay to build a driveway out of concrete. It's okay to drive a gasoline car. Um, it, it's just on every, in, in, on every front, we're being put into a box. And this series, along with a lot of other things we do on this program, is to push back on that. Don't get caught up in that. Don't have opportunity to return to the old life, the old ways. But now, it says, you and I desire a better. That is a heavenly country. Thank God this isn't all there is. Thank God heaven's not on earth, because if it is, I'm really disappointed. It's just not at all the way I expected it to be. It's not. This is not heaven. We're not building heaven here. There's going to be a lot of bad things happen in this world before Jesus comes and sets up his kingdom. And we're seeing uh, part of that right now. Uh, so, but, but, but that doesn't change the fact that we're one day closer to heaven than we were yesterday. Uh, therefore, you know, I just had a birthday and people are asking how old I am. And, and let me just tell you, I had a birthday last week and I am one year older than I was the last birthday. So you do the math. <laughs> I'm one year older and one year closer to heaven. One day closer to heaven at the end of every day. Think about that. We are closer than we've ever been. I, we should get excited about that. You know, I've said this before and trying to encourage people, but it's true. You know, we don't have to hype, overhype Jesus or overhype heaven or, or what God has given us. Um, but if the fact that you and I are going to heaven ought to just change everything, you know, we ought to be the happiest people in the world. If you were going to Hawaii next week for an all expense paid vacation, for 10 days, you'd be giddy this week. And, and it, even if things weren't going so well, you would have something to look forward to. That helps. That helps us go through life and finish strong and, and do the things we need to do to get ready because we know that next week is going to be different. Things are going to change. And that's what he's saying is, we desire a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called our God, for he has prepared for us a city. Don't give up your vision. Don't give up the promises that God has made to you. And uh, uh, we, we want to be part of this. I want to help you run. You know, you're not alone. Uh, we want to continue to create these programs to come to you in whatever outlet you're watching. We are not re uh, reducing our outreach. We're going to increase it. And so uh, we're going to continue to create programs like this to encourage you, to help you. I pray and seek God for exactly what my audience needs at the time. And I continually gather content to bring to you. And uh, we've created this, this studio. If you're new to the program, you weren't here. I'm sorry you missed uh, the creation. We kind of went through it uh, with the program and showed you various stages uh, of this area and this studio. And the partners helped me build it. Thank you so much for doing that. We are s set up. We have a platform to reach the world. I have a message. I can't seem to get it out. Uh, we've been doing this now for seven years, and every time I get up here, I think, I don't know if I can get all this said, and I want to say it well enough for you to understand it. And so what I'm saying is, you're not alone. I'm going through the same things you are. I'm facing the same opposition you are, and we're going to make it. We can run this race together. Continue to tune into this program. Make it part of your day. DVR it. Uh, go to YouTube and watch the different series because, uh, you know, it's, it's game time. We are in the game, and the clock is running. Let's do this right. Let's press for. and I've said this over and over. I'm going to say it again. You may not be able to score an ultimate touchdown today. You may not be able to change the world today with your life and your actions, but you know what? You can go forward another day. You can go forward another yard. You can, if you're falling, fall forward and then get back up again. Uh, every moment counts and thank God for the opportunity 
to live for God. If you have promises in your life about your country, your future, your children, your family that haven't come to pass yet, stop resenting that and start rejoicing over it. The greatest men and women in the Bible ran with purpose and vision. What does that mean? That means that the promises that were made to them did not come to pass overnight. They might have had to believe God for decades and if you've been doing that, you're in good company. This is what we do. We're called believers. We believe. That's what we do. And we believe God's promises. Don't believe the worst. Don't believe the news reports. Don't believe necessarily the experts. Believe God. And if God has shown you things in your heart, hold on to those. And that's the second point of this uh, that, that God made to Habakkuk. He said, write that vision. Remind yourself of what God has said because God is able to do what He said He would do and He's able to do it in your life. Then, once you don't, don't count God out and write the vision, remind yourself of what He said, don't give in to these lies that will come to you along the way. There are, you know, as I've said before, if you were going to run a marathon, I haven't done that. I don't have that kind of vision. I didn't get that kind of promise from God. God never told me you're going to run a marathon. Thank God he didn't tell me that. But if I ever did, I'm sure that there are times along the way where you wonder, am I going to finish? Am I really going to finish this race? And there are lies that the enemy will tell you. And, he, you know, I don't know how sophisticated his system is, but he may have you on a timer and say, you know, at 10 years, tell him this and give them this lie and see if this discourages them. At 20 years, tell them this. And at, at 30 years, tell them this. Say 30 years, yes, we've been believing th some things for 30 years. And I'm not ashamed of that. I'm gonna hold on to that ball. I'm gonna run another day. I'm gonna believe God. And as those promises come to pass and they ha have begun, people like you are gonna be blessed uh, because God made me promises about people. And uh, that's my realm, that's my career. Uh, but, but hold on to what God said. And then recognize these lies as they come along, as they surely will. And I'll just give you the lies and then we're going to break them down one by one. But the, one of the lies that the enemy will tell is that the state of the world is now too bad. It's too evil. It's too anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-economy, the middle class is being wiped out. Uh, the, the circumstances are too bad for God to do what He said He would do with your life. And as I said, there are people that believe that every day now. Not necessarily Christians, but worldly people. They don't want to have kids because the world's no place to ha raise kids. They don't, they don't want to move out of their parents' house. They've already decided my life is not going to be as good as what my parents gave me, what my parents had. My future is bleak. And they are just giving up because they believe that circumstances are too contrary the headwinds are too great. The, 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 the giants we face are too strong that we cannot now be what we could have been. That's a lie. And we're going we're gonna to dissect it and destroy it. But you're going to have to keep watching. The next lie is that my mistakes, you know, God told me things. And God, oh yeah, God wanted to do great things. But I've made so many mistakes now, I'm not qualified. Can I just tell you, none of us are qualified and all of us have made mistakes, and God already factored that in. That's the, that's the beauty of dealing with a, an omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God. He knew the mistakes you were going to make before He made you these promises. So that was already factored in. He wouldn't have wasted His time and tell you something when He knows you're going to disqualify yourself and you're just going to have to be put on the sideline. He would have just kindly, quietly ushered you to the sideline without telling you what you missed. Because that's not the kind of God he is. He's not going to taunt you and tempt you and tease you and then say, I'm just kidding. Go sit down. You're worthless. That's not the God we serve. If God made you promises in your past, in your history, he, they are still in effect. He's not a man that he should lie. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He factors in all of these things 
And then he, he custom fits promises for you in your life and your future. Don't give that up uh, just because you've made mistakes. And we've got scriptures for that. And then finally, uh, another lie that, that the devil will tell you, and he probably does this at the, you know, the later uh, marks in your, in your race, but, but he says it's too late. Now it's not going to happen. It can't happen now. If it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. Just give up and quit. Now, that was a great example of that's Abraham. Um, and this just goes to show you that God custom fits each promise for each individual. God told Abraham when he was 75 that he was going to have descendants, like children. And at that point, he didn't have any. And he, was, uh, he didn't have any still until he was 100. So for 25 years, he had to believe that. But that was, that was obviously a lie that he heard over and over again was if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. Uh, but he held on to that promise. In fact, the Bible says that he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God promised, he was able also to perform. That is the, the, the proper posture for someone who's running with a promise, is be fully persuaded that what God, he encouraged himself, he built himself up, he wrote the promise, he reminded himself of what God said, and then he stayed fully persuaded that what God promised he was able also to perform. And if you've let that slip, guess what? You can get it back. It's your promise. The enemy can't have it. <clears throat> he may have stolen it or gotten you to throw it away, but he can't keep it. If you want your promises back, if you want your destiny back, if you want your future back, if you want your purpose and vision back, you can take it back. Just remind yourself of what God has said to you and renew that. Write it down and, re and, and remember that continually and give God praise. And uh, you'll be right back in, in the thick of things in no time. It's not like you have to go through some probation period to get your vision back. That's just not how, you, how it works. God is ready for you to get right back in the game. And I encourage you to do so. Man, well, the offer we're doing right now is if you will decide to partner with us, run with us, become a partner of $25, $50, or $100 a month. You can see the ways to give on the screen. Uh, we will send you your free uh, series, Get Your Vision Back, audio series. It's four messages. It will encourage you. You can listen to it over and over again, but you have to specify as, when you become a partner, email us or call us and say, hey, I want my free series get your vision back in CD or USB. And we will send that to you as part of your partner package. And you do get a package, you'll get a newsletter periodically, we'll communicate with you monthly, and, 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 and we can communicate with you weekly if you'd like to give us your email. And you don't have to do this by yourself. You can connect with a ministry. I believe we see what you're seeing. I sense what you sense, and we're here to do something about it together. And don't miss the rest of this series. Until next time, remember this, the good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter.